Hi, I'm Marcelo, and I'm head of technology and platform for Core Networks. Welcome to our Nokia Core Talk. I'm very proud to have Telia here today. Telia's mission is building a digital society, the future network in Nordic and Baltic radio, giving people access to ex exciting new services is very inspiring. So Nokia has a long partnership with Telia, started with the deployment of centralized network database, followed the virtualized enhanced packet core network, and today we are continuing that partnership in building 5G standalone core. I'm pleased to welcome Christina Ottenson and Sharia Khan. Christina is the head of mobile architecture in Telia, and Sharia Khan is the head of core data networks. Welcome to our Nokia core talk. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Let's start with public cloud. Public cloud implementation is now a reality on CSP. We see some of them doing already experimentations on the public cloud. So what is your view on using public clouds and how do you see Telia benefiting from that? So uh, obviously there are really good reasons for us as operators to look at what public cloud uh, players are doing, uh, handling cloud native, a lot of automation, scalability, etc. Uh, but we also see they have some, some gaps of providing us with our telco grade uh, requirements. And we also have requirements on national autonomy, for example. It's very important to us and we cannot see them uh, supporting uh, most of our countries for, for, for that requirement. Uh, still, we see opportunities uh, to work together with them. For example, at the edge, it could be regional edge or on-prem uh, edge, mm -hmm. uh, where we, could, we can bring the connectivity services and they can bring their services to the same customer. And in those cases, we can also leverage their platform for our, for example, part of our core network. Sure, now to you. So we stay on the public cloud content. So just because our software now is cloud native, it doesn't mean that we run any platform. So how do you see the interaction with hyperscalers and what kind of a challenges do you see in the operation of the hybrid networks? Yeah, so although public cloud offers agility and elasticity, at the same time, we also need to give due consideration to the requirements such as uh, availability and performance. The other main challenge is basically the umbrella orchestration capability that is needed to move the workloads seamlessly between the, uh, across the multi-cloud environment and on demand. So it's not just about uh, also being able to just to move the workloads, also it's a matter of ensuring that service assurance capabilities are working across the private public boundaries, you know, as it should be. Mm -hmm. right. And of course it's also imperative to establish new partnerships and alliances across the whole landscape, uh, not just including telco operators and vendors, you know. It should also include hyperscalers and you know, like app developers. And only then will we truly able to leverage upon the unique set of capabilities that are being on the offer. So, uh, Marcelo, how will you at, at Nokia support us uh, running the different uh, the different platforms so first thing in what we're doing is that we want to make sure that our products run on multi-platforms so we are working very heavily with all the hyperscalers so amazon google microsoft vmware and and Hat, Hat to make sure that our application can run so we're bringing the telco requirements to them so make sure the application the same experience no matter what you want so and they and because you know their infrastructure like you said Sherry, so it's, it's not ready for the telco. So we are bringing our requirements, make sure that they understand the needs, so they understand your needs as well. So then we go together so we can make sure that this multiple hybrid environment really, really benefits and, and, and works. So from the packet core perspective, edge implementation has a potential of bringing in a lot of flexibility and innovation. So what are the key enablers or functionalities from Nokia perspective, that should be the key driving factors uh, in this respect. Oh, okay, that's a good one. So I think the disaggregation, hopefully we spark the industry with some new services so that we can utilize this flexibility to address whatever the new low latency applications will come, right? So I personally believe that slicing orchestration, programmability of the network and the network automation itself are the key enablers to bring that speed that we need to build the new services. So what, what I mean with that is, 
the flexibility to deploy a packet core at the edge quick, fast, link with the open APIs to be exposed so that you can have the breakout in the quickly, so you can read all the application, you can get all the infrastructure done quickly, that will be the differentiators. So Nokia is live orchestration and the network as code are exactly addressing that to be able to build that capability on the networks. Christina, yep. so moving to the 5GSA core, it's just around the corner. So what are your drivers for introducing 5GSA core and what do you expect with it? Mm. I mean, first of all, you would need a 5G core to support a true end-to-end -end 5G service. So that's the first thing. But we also see that this will evolve over time, of course. Uh, the radio needs to, be, to reach a lot more coverage and we need to, to also have a lot more capacity for, for the 5G by reforming from old technologies. Uh, but looking at, and then if I focus on the core, I think for the 5G core, that, that is where innovation will happen going yeah. forward. So sooner or uh, later, you will need the 5G core. So, so, so that is also the evolution track. Uh, and then uh, as an architect, I can also be a bit excited over the new uh, service-based architecture, API-based uh, architecture that will foster more automation and, and openness in the, in the ecosystem uh, as well. If you ask me about uh, the services, uh, we see the enterprise services uh -huh. happening first and also okay. due to that we will not have uh, countrywide coverage. Right. So, so, so also the enterprise uh, cases are the most important, but of course, eventually we also see custom or uh, consumer based uh, uh, use cases with, for example, advanced gaming with VR mm -hmm. and, and AR. So uh, again, it's a long long pause. <laughs> All right. Sure, yeah. 5G SA Core promised the possibility to introduce a new innovative service like Christina just mentioned, right? So what are your priorities in preparing for those regarding the network readiness and operational capabilities that you need? Yeah. So, okay, this is uh, very close to my heart. I'm really passionate about this. So mm. I would say automation, automation, and automation. <laughs> okay, let me correct myself. Automation, automation, and mindset shift. And because I think from my perspective, we need to be adequately prepared in terms of not just tools and processes, but also from the all important people dimension uh, as well. And that's why I mentioned mindset shift. Uh, mindset shift, uh, actually, you know, that's very important. And the de demands for catering for the plethora of new innovative services comes together with the need to be able to support increasingly complex network, cloud, and applications landscape. And this can only be achieved with the right level of uh, preparedness when it comes to getting the right level of automation in place. And not just from the perspective of uh, deployment, but from the complete lifecycle management of the service, including the all important assurance part as well. And it's also a matter of truly embracing the cloud native principles. You know, not, it's not just treating it as, as like a buzzword, but it's, you know, we need to truly adapt the cloud native principles by going all in with DevOps or DevOps as Nokia likes to call it, ways of working and laying down the foundation for the intent-based automation. This covers the whole process from the software delivery, you know, from the vendors, you know, app de developers to the network services planning, design, and then all the way to deployment, testing, and operations. So this intent-based automation needs to cover all the complete lifecycle, uh, you know, for the service. And then now coming a little bit, to, you know, to address the people dimension uh, as well, as I mentioned earlier, it should, it should play a significant role uh, to successfully navigate through this paradigm shift that we are facing now. We as operators need to increase the efficiency many, many folds, meaning speed and flexibility. And that too at an unprecedented scale. So it's not just about mere, you know, competence of skilling or, you know, closing the gaps in comes to, you know, competence like, you know, automation. It's also about introducing more efficient ways of working. And it's also about being able to successfully bring about a lasting cultural change with a renewed customer focus and relevance in mind. As we have discussed, uh, 5G will bring a lot of opportunities, uh, but we also need to, to make some money of it. So, so what, uh, what are you as, as Nokia supporting us with to, to, to monetize uh, 
the 5G? No, that, that's a tough question. I <laughs> think that the monetization, uh, like we discussed being with the new services, like you have launched the 5G uh, fixed wide access, so we might have autonomous car or long distance, so that will be the just a starting point. But together, it will be a learning journey, right? How are we going to monetize that? How kind of a new service can monetize in a better way? So we expose network capabilities the way that you can monetize those. Uh, I think historically doing all this API we have in the past has been hard mm -hmm. because they are complicated. You need to really to be a telecom engineer to understand what's going on the APIs. Mm -hmm. Now we need to find a way to simplify that so anyone can consume these APIs. And with the forum as the case and the network as code approach that we have, so that we will enable that simplification and then at the end we enable how you can monetize mm -hmm. that. I think that will be the journey together we have to do. But we are building the basics with slice orchestration networks code to enable that to happen and find exactly what your case, how we can monetize that. So Christina, we are introducing a new model called software as a service, which can make some of deployment and expansion easier. So how do you see this new model being relevant to Telia? Uh, it it's looks quite impressing and interesting mm -hmm. and, and of course very convenient just to, to press the bottom and right. you will get, <laughs> get <laughs> the core. Correct. <laughs> and uh, of course I see some opportunities uh, to use that, for example in innovation uh, cases or when you want to try uh, a new uh, network function, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But, but all in all, to, to be honest, I think we as an operator uh, would like to stay on top of, of the platform and, and, mm -hmm. and possibly also of the infra uh, to be on control of uh, uh, and remain our flexibility and, and be in control of costs, uh, etc. All right, Marcelo. So there's still a big hype around slicing and the services it will enable. So what is the Nokia's view on it, on it actually? Yeah, I agree with you, there's a lot of hype. I think the, the slice technology exists, is available now, uh, but not take up the scale yet. Uh, I believe as we see more use cases on the slice in the technology and what it needs to be for the CNFs will improve, we evolve. So I think the slice will be the key to bring the agility and the automation that is needed. I think that's the key thing on the, uh, on the 5G core network, that you're able to do the things much faster, deploy, and use any programmability to do whatever you need. I think that's, that's the key element on the slice. I think we are still in the beginning. As we move forward, those things will evolve. And, and then you have the challenge of how you maintain all those slices up and running, how they interact with each other, how you maintain our configuration. That's where automation needs to come because it will be much more complex. You're going to have a network of networks and that slice technology will evolve to support it and all the automation around that. So, uh, of course, we as, a, as an operator are looking into multiple ways of reducing our costs uh, mm. uh, through network automation. Uh, so, what is your vision in, in that area? I think automation, like you said, automation, 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 <laughs> the mindset <laughs> change. I think we have to break down this automation in multiple pieces, right? So, first, when we move to the cloud native, then we use the, the Kubernetes as the web scale. So, that gives a big platform for orchestration mm. where you can manage your workloads much faster, much better, in, in a better way. So you have to think about network as a collection of orchestrated automated microservices that will allow you to have that speed that you need to automate. But as well, like you said, so expanding to, to really to a DevOps or we call it DevOps, because then the other part of the process of the process part of the automation is to play a role as well. Not only technology, but how you operate mm. or how, how it roll out the process. Mm. That is very important and that's how we need to work together to solve different problems on that part as well. Mm. Now the final question. So Christina <laughs> and Shire, <laughs> what's the value you see in work with us at Nokia? So for me, being in the mobile area, uh, I think it's, it's very good that you have the full portfolio. You have radio, core uh, orchestration, uh, also part of the fixed network. So, so for me, that, that's a very convenient partner because you will understand our f full business, more or less. <laughs> yeah, I would say that we expect Nokia as a trusted partner and a key, key player, uh, you know, in the evolving ecosystem, as uh, Christina mentioned as well, and to walk in step with us 
and helping us to realize the full potential of 5G and beyond. So that's what our expectations are from Nokia. And also, I believe together we stand a better chance of finding ways to keep on innovating and ultimately bringing the value for our end, end customers, right? That's what we all strive for. Right. Christina Sherryar, thank you very much. This was a great, excellent talk. I like it very much. It was a pleasure to have you both here in our headquarters in Finland and looking forward to continue our great cooperation. This concludes our session. We hope you liked the talk. Thank you for joining us today. See you later. Yep. <laughs> bye bye.